So learning to code is not really enough anymore. You know, I always thought that when you become a developer and you work for a company, or especially if you build something on your own, it's all about being the best programmer. But what I've realized two and a half years into my life as a developer is that beyond a certain point, no one actually cares about your coding skills. And this is said to become even more true in 2024. So I recently saw this quote by Tom O'Reilly, who is this apparently important tech personality thinker guy. And it gave me the idea of making this video. This is the quote. I think the golden age of the last couple of decades where you can become a programmer and you'll get a job is sort of over. Programming is no more like being able to read and write. You just have to be able to do it. So basically what this is saying that in the future, coding will just sort of be a thing that you're supposed to know how to do rather than this super special skill that people are gonna pay a lot of money you for. So I wanted to explore this argument and I'll give you my conclusion on whether that is gonna happen in a second. But what is certainly clear that simply learning to code and then getting a job that's gonna pay you enough to like build wealth and build an amazing life is not as easy anymore as it used to be before, especially now in 2024. And I think there's three reasons for this. First is simply because learning to code is easier than it has ever been. Like I could probably teach my dad some basics of programming in like two hours and then just give him ChatGPT and like he might be able to code something pretty reasonable in that time. Another thing is that the world has sort of caught on to this learning to code thing and the fact that having a nine to five job that's pretty chill, where you just get to sit at home with your laptop is a pretty good deal, especially compared to the other high paying corporate careers like law, banking, and these kind of things. And when you have dumbasses like me online literally shouting from the rooftops and telling everyone how amazing being a software engineer is, well, that leads to a lot of other people trying it. And then we have the job market where with AI and all these kind of things, companies don't need as many developers anymore. Like Twitter laid off literally like 80% of their workforce. So when you combine more and more people getting in coding and the process of learning it being easier than it was ever before with a lot less job opportunities available, that leads to a lot of competition, right? But it's not all bad because there are some things you can do. Because what 99% of people who get into coding don't realize is what actually makes for a good developer. So we'll talk about a couple of extra skills that you need to just learn on top of coding to actually make you stand out massively. And another thing that they don't know are certain strategies that are now becoming the sort of new best opportunities with coding that don't have this competition where you can go and take your coding skills and still build wealth and build this amazing life Life that you actually want. So we'll talk about both in this video. Before we get into that though, if you're looking to make 2024 the year you finally take action and become a developer, I'm running a 20% off special New Year's discount on my full program where I teach you all the technical and non-technical skills you will need to know to go from zero to landing multiple job offers as a developer based on my own experience and my experience helping others do the same. So if you don't want to waste another year not getting results, you can check that out below. But don't wait because you only have a limited time to grab the deal. Now let's get into the video. So first, let's get real about what it's actually like to be a developer in the real world. Like you might have these ideas of you being a developer at some companies and you're just giving these amazingly complex problems that are like exciting and then you solve them and like everyone thinks you're super cool because now you're smart and you're like doing this amazing like impactful work and all these kind of things. But in truth, like this is what it looks like. The tasks you're given are most of the time going to be something that you have no idea how to complete. And number two, these tasks are going to be the most most boring things you could imagine, like moving some button around or literally just filling some config files that sort of just have to exist, but no one actually really cares. Like you can think about like taking out the trash at home, like no one's going to think you're a hero for doing it, but it just sort of has to get done. And especially as a junior, these are the level of things you're going to be doing and no one really actually cares about what you're doing at the end of the day. So if you're there as this hotshot junior developer and you're like really motivated and you want to stand out and you want to show them like, yes, I deserve the promotions and all that, what can you do to stand out? Well, I believe the first thing to show are some actual human skills. So the stereotype of a developer is just some nerd coder who's sitting in his mom's basement and coding some like weird projects that no one cares about. And when you get into the real job, like this is legitimately what most devs in the job are like. Like I'm not kidding. Most of them literally look like they've never interacted with a real human in their lives. They might be good at coding, but when it comes to communicating, to explaining what they're doing, to like teaching someone else in the team how to do something they just can't 
do it. And it's really annoying to work with these kinds of people. So if you can be the one developer who actually has real communication skills, like you can just be personable, be charismatic, someone who's nice to work with, that is actually going to set you apart quite well. And I think that's the first way to set yourself apart as a developer in 2024. Now, the second thing is having an understanding of what actually makes for good software. Most people think that the job of a developer is to write code. And that's nonsense. That's actually not what your job is about. Like, let me be clear. No one gives a f about your code. Like when we built our first app, Boxio, do you think any single user who downloads that application is going, oh, I bet they're using a cool web socket to like connect my browser to this application. This is the reason why I'm going to use Use this app like no no one thinks that way because no one cares about the underlying code what people care about is one thing and one thing only does this app solve some problem for me is this something that i want to be using so now that you understand that how can you use this information to help you like businesses are very logical entities they only care about one thing and one thing only making money and the only reason you exist as an employee is to make that company more money so what your job should be to understand very precisely how your job and your work contributes to the company making more money and then do things that actually help the company make more money by understanding things like user experience which is about like forgetting what the code actually looks like and just like thinking about the apps that you're building from the perspective of the user when the user opens up this checkout page for example what's going to make this flow of entering the card details and whatever as easy as possible and as nice for the user as possible when we built the first version of our app Voxio the user experience was absolutely terrible. So probably a lot of people downloaded it, just instantly deleted it because it made no sense what you were even supposed to do. So I absolutely make these mistakes myself. And in these kind of situations, the kind of developer that would have been the most valuable developer is the kind of developer who understands user experience, who understands that the purpose of software is to solve problems for our users, to write our code in such a way that is as nice and as good for the user to use as possible. And that solves the problem that our software is trying to solve as well and as easily as possible. Now, of course, at a massive company like a big corporation, it's going to be much harder for you to have any influence over these kinds of decisions because the things you're doing are just way too small for you to actually tangibly be able to like improve the user experience or do other things that actually help the company make more money. But this actually takes us into the next set of things I want to talk about. Because you see the path that almost everyone when they're learning to code has in mind is like, okay, I'm just going to get a job at a big company and then I'm just going to climb the corporate ladder, get promotion, and then eventually I'm going to be rich and all these kind of things. But let me tell you, this path is becoming less and less and less appealing and effective as time goes on. And what I'm talking about with this first thing is something called geographic arbitrage. Thanks to the internet nowadays, there's actually no need for you to live in the same location as where your employer is. So what you can do is work for a Western high income company, like a company in the US, for example, as either a freelancer or a remote worker. And then instead of you yourself living in this high cost country with crime and all these problems, you can move to a much cheaper country with a much higher standard of living. Actually, people don't realize that there's so many places around the world where you can get more for much less. I'm talking Eastern Europe, I'm talking Malaysia, I'm talking Thailand. And what this means is that instead of having to work for 40 years to reach financial freedom or whatever your goal is, you might only have to do it for five years or 10 years. Now, I know not everyone's interested in this. Maybe you just want to live in your country and that is absolutely fine. But I would highly, highly consider this if this is something that even resonates with you a little bit. And I also made a full video on how to become a remote developer and all these kind of things. I will leave that down below in the description. But that's only the first reason why I have a problem with the traditional corporate career path. The second reason is that you just don't know how long your job is going to become relevant. And so to address the quote that I presented to you in the start of the video, no, I don't think that programming will just become like a commodity. I don't think like in 10 years, everyone's just gonna know how to code. I don't think AI is gonna replace programmers or anything like that. I think it's largely overblown. But while this is what I think, like we have to remember that I know absolutely nothing. I'm completely clueless. So seeing as you have one life, do you think it's really worth it for you to just put all your eggs in this one basket of you just working for this one company and having all your income be dependent on this one employer when they can literally just fire you at any time? So that's why my goal is always to learn the code, to get a job, yes, as you should in the beginning, 
but as soon as possible to start building side income, to start building side hustles, to have these multiple streams of income coming in. So even if one of them ends, even if I get fired, I can still make money. I'm not gonna have to worry about the short term. People often say that having a job is the safe path, but I think it's sort of a very risky path to just have everything dependent on this one type of source of income. So if you can build out apps that solve problems, that over time as you build enough of these, maybe one of them takes off, it starts making money, amazing. If you can create content online, maybe you create a digital product, maybe you can start making freaking plugins for WordPress or something like that. Like there's so many possibilities that you can use coding to do all these kind of things. And the thing about working as a software developer is when you're working nine to five, you still have all the evenings and the weekends to build something else on the side as well. Maybe you just get another job, like literally get a second job. Because if you wanna truly secure your future, you just wanna start building out wealth as fast as possible. And the great thing, by the way, if you're doing this geographic arbitrage thing, rather than needing to build out like millions of dollars to be secure, you might only need like a couple of hundred thousand because it's so cheap to live in some of these countries that you don't have to feel like you need millions or anything like that. If you're just willing to take out the first couple of years of your career to hustle as much as you possibly can and you just don't quit, I think anyone can do this if you use these strategies and you keep these skills in mind. Now, I told you there's so many ways for you to become financially independent and to make money with coding. So actually you can go watch this video next where I continue from this on how you can use this to make that $10,000 a month with coding. So go watch that video next.